Hey, welcome to A Little Better Podcast. My name is Daniel. I'll be your host. This week, we're shaking things up on the podcast. Actually, the whole month of December we are, and we have uh, emphasis on Beyond Ministry at Northridge Church, how we're getting outside the walls of our church. This week on the podcast, we have the Executive Director of Outreach at Northridge Church, Josh Horn, on talking about all things beyond. We'll also do a little bit of sermon discussion and talk about why we do beyond, how we do it, and how you can get involved. Uh, Remember, our goal on this podcast is to know Jesus better by the power of His Spirit, do better, so together we can be a little better. Hey, welcome to the Little Better Podcast. Uh, we're back. It's December, Christmas time. Drew, Hallelujah. you finally got the trees up, right? I did. Yep, they're just they're two up. months ago, right? That's right. <laughs> I'm dusting them now. So, <laughs> Josh, is your tree up yet? Uh, yeah, we're one of those families that puts it up Thanksgiving weekend. We were the real late fake people. We do fake, so oh, okay. we've been running on I Me think too. six or seven years on this tree. So nice. Yeah, that's that's cost that's effective, fun. right? Yep. Cost effective. Awesome. Hey, Drew, give us a one minute recap of the message. Okay, one minute we started a series called Heaven Invades Earth, and we talked about how heaven came to earth. So Jesus' birth and the significance of how he came and what makes him unique. And it is, he's born of a virgin, which allows him to avoid the sinful nature, live a sinless life, be fully God, yet fully man, fulfill prophecy. And because of that, um, the ramifications is he is a worthy rescuer. So he is the only rescuer to save us from our sins. And so the the actual Christmas story is the miracle that sets up every other miracle. Mm. And you gave a, a... Yo, that was like 45 seconds. That was. That was saying. super impressive. This is where the podcast should add like clappy. Yay. <laughs> Producer Ian, can you do that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and you gave us a thesis statement uh, for this talk, but it's really the big idea for the whole series, which was... Yeah, so Christmas is the beginning of God's rescue plan for us. Nice. Yep. W- which transitions nicely into what we're really going to be talking about this week and the next three weeks on the podcast, which is about beyond. And what what is beyond? Josh, what's beyond? Yeah, so we like to say that beyond is really anything beyond the walls of our campuses, right? Whether um, that's in our community right here in the Rochester area or that's serving around the world. Um, it's all of the projects we do to invest and make a difference in our community and around the globe. And while we do beyond all year long, typically in December, while people are thinking about things like generosity and caring for others, um, it's a great time for us to uh, do some targeted beyond projects. Mm. So we mentioned it on Sunday, and then in the next two weeks, we're going to introduce a little bit more about our Beyond initiatives, Um, so we're super excited about that. I think that's the unique thing about Beyond that many people don't know, is we often tie Beyond to, you know, this time of year. It's Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving, Beyond's coming, but our church is going beyond all the time, right? We're investing in our community. There's things that we do from week to week, you know, things that we, we are known for that are Beyond that happen all the time. Absolutely. I, there's a number of community groups that have committed to meeting a care portal need every trimester. So I'm constantly seeing groups out there serving. A number of groups and individuals in our church are connected deeply with some of the partners that we're, we're partnered with, like World Relief, a number of people from uh, our church that are connected there serving refugees. Mm. I know just in the last couple of weeks, some of the first uh, Afghani refugees have been resettled yeah. in Rochester, and some people from Northridge have been able to, to play a role in that. That's so cool. all year long, people are serving serving in incredible ways with our partners and through beyond. Yeah. You guys answered like what we do or really like some vision behind it, but why do we even do beyond? Like, I guess that's like a good place to start, right? We've already kind of started this conversation, but why do we give of time, resources, talents? Why do we have partners? You know, why, why do we do that? Yeah. I, I think one of the coolest things about the timing for beyond is beyond because we do these Christmas pushes with Beyond, we're usually talking about Jesus coming to earth. The Christmas yeah. season is about the incarnation. And so what better way to reflect Jesus coming and, and dying on our behalf, making himself, you know, becoming human on our behalf, um, than to reflect 
that out in our community, to mm-hmm. be incarnate, to go out and engage in our community. And so um, a series about heaven invading earth, what a perfect tie to us taking what what we've got from the heaven, from the from heaven, from the gospel, and bringing that to our community, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. We invade yeah. our community with the gospel message when we live beyond. And another tie from Jesus, right? He invades earth, but when he leaves, he also says in Acts 1-8, mm-hmm. yeah, you're going to be my witnesses, right? Mm-hmm. In Judea, Samaria, and to the other parts of the world. And so he makes it pretty clear that he invaded, we need to invade, right? Yeah. We need to invade our communities with the love of Christ. We need to invade our homes. We need to invade the world with, yeah. you know, the love of Christ. And so he made it pretty clear that beyond is something really every church should be about. It's just a matter of which, you know, partners they have and how they go about that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I feel like it would be a really helpful conversation for some people. You know, we have a lot of new people around Northridge in the past year. Uh, where has Beyond been? Like, what have we been a part of? You know, th- there's some historic Northridgers that probably know, like, every yeah, yeah, um, yeah. nook of, of Beyond. But where has Beyond been in the past? Um, if you could give us, either one of you guys, a quick couple-minute summary of what we used to be about or what we used to do. Um, yeah, start Yeah. There. Well, we have a long history as a church of doing some really incredible global missions projects to, to bring the gospel, to bring um, hope to people all around the world who don't know Jesus. Mm-hmm. Um, in the last 10 to 15 years, we've been involved in a number of projects for anyone that's been around even just a, a few years. Um, they might be familiar with uh, Mara Mara, the village yeah. in Africa. You mentioned it just a few weeks ago in your message. Uh, you, the layover in Turkey, right, was what, <laughs> what right. we talked about. But um, we did some projects in, in Chad, uh, in the country of Chad in Central Africa for five or six years where we um, empowered a community to um, get clean water, to have some schools built and all of that. And, and we've wrapped that project up last year. Unfortunately, we, because of COVID, didn't have a chance to go do kind mm. of a final celebration mm, yeah. with the village. But we were able to end that project well. And those people, there there are teachers there who are uh, sharing the gospel, who are Christians, mm. who are educating the village in French and in, in some other things. And so uh, we've really left a legacy in there of, of gospel outreach. Um, but now we're kind of pivoting the last few years. Um, it used to be called Advent Conspiracy. Just in the yep. last few years, uh, we've renamed all of this Beyond so that we can have a kind of shared focus beyond the walls of our church locally and globally. And a lot of that was your vision. The mm-hmm. Beyond idea came from um, language you crafted. But yeah, that's kind of the longer history of Beyond. Yeah. And Beyond is, you know, there's two parts to Beyond that I think people don't fully understand. There's a global side and then there's a like our everyday neighborhood side, right? Where we have partners that we invest that invest in the community of Rochester uh, to do so many things for the sake of the gospel. And so Mara Mara was that global side. We invested heavily in a in nowhere, basically, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it is out there, right? If you've ever experienced out out there, you (laughs) haven't experienced it yet. This is end of the road. And then a little further, and then you still have to take three hours in a car. And then off the cliff, end of the road. So, yeah, what I love about Beyond is it touches so many places, right? It's in our backyard, but it's also around the world. Yeah, absolutely. I I love the language and the, the focus of Beyond being both locally, you know, stateside and international missions in a bunch of different avenues because it helps us not separate those things because they're not intended to be separate. You know, it's like you're supposed to, um, it's, it's progressional, you know, you should be doing these things and be engaged at different levels of investment of all these categories, but not like, Oh, here's a category, here's a category, here's a category. And I split things up, but it's like, no, how can you live, you know, and engage beyond like Mm -hmm. just coming to church on Sunday. And I, I love that language. Um, so that's great. I love that. That's where we've been. Where are we now? Like what, uh, there's been this, uh, it seems I came in like at the, in the middle of beyond kind of doing this facelift, this refocusing, this kind of being more laser targeted. Um, but where are we at right now? Yeah, so about a year ago, the outreach team um, and Drew, we we chatted about, hey, what do we want to be about? Beyond is so broad. There's a thousand things. I mean, if I pulled the people of Northridge, you know, we would get 1,500 different passions, mm. yeah, places sure. that we could focus our work. And, and the reality is we have limited funds, limited volunteer hours. What can we focus on? And so in that dialogue, we really came to a place of saying, 
what are we uniquely equipped to do? What are the passions of our staff and our core people? Like who out there is already deeply embedded and engaged in, in certain things? And let's pour our energy into those things. Let's lean on the passion, talents, and, and gifts of the people that, that God has sent our way, that are walking with us. And so that landed us into three target areas. So kind of the, the line for, for beyond is we want to go beyond the walls of our church with the gospel. That's the prime you know, issue here. That's what we're trying to do. And how are we doing it? By strengthening families, ending poverty, and seeking justice. And those three lines tie heavily into some passions on our staff. The strengthened families ties deeply into foster care and adoption that a lot mm. of our staff and our church family are engaged with. Ending poverty, we've got some great partners that are doing some incredible yeah. work serving, um, you know, people, uh, impoverished people, and people with significant mental and uh, social needs in our community. And then seek justice. We want to do all of this with God's justice in mind. And so we want to be able to, to, you know, as far as we are able, reflect the kingdom by bringing God's economy to the world. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think those are three things that God is passionate about. Right. And, you know, people get caught up on the words, right. You know, end poverty, like, come on, that's a <laughs> lofty goal, right? <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but I mean, Hey, we are going to shoot for the sky because we serve a big God, right? He is capable of ending poverty. Right. And we recognize we're probably not going to end poverty, mm. but we're going to, we're going to try. We're going to try to help people, love people where they're at and, you know, seek justice, right? People get caught up on this word, mm -hmm. you know, justice, social yeah. justice, but we have to recognize our God is a God of justice, mm -hmm. right? It's mm -hmm. how he is described and defined. And there's a lot of ways we do that. And I think if our church got behind these three things, we could do a lot of damage for the gospel and bring a lot of people to the gospel, right? Yeah, absolutely. When I when I think of heaven, I think of heaven as a place where these three things are perfected. We have yeah. the perfect family with God as the Father, right? Mm. A strong family. We have um, no more poverty in heaven. No kinds of poverty. No physical poverty. Mm. No relational. No emotional. There's no poverty. And then we have perfect justice. God's perfect justice. Yeah. You know, Jesus's death on the cross satisfied and created this perfect justice that we see fully realized in heaven. And so what we're doing is saying we know what God's ultimate economy will look like, what mm. the final destination looks like. Let's create that here in yeah. the church. And then as the church reaches out to the community, yep. the perfect versions of those are going to be realized in the next life. But let's do what we can now. Yeah. yeah so. so let me ask you this, Josh. So to bring more clarity for people, OK, you got these three terms right? So break down what we're doing under the three terms. Yeah, that's great. So um, strength in families, I, I kind of mentioned already, we've got kind of a, a culture and a current of adoption and foster care. Uh, connected let's go, to baby. Ridge. Let's yeah, go. Right? Come on. And so, uh, yeah, we both have adopted that's children. Right. So right. this is uh, our heartbeat. We're, We're like, we, we both have adopted. Yeah, that's us. That's us. Right. That's, right. Oh, that's me. Yeah, I forgot. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so we want to support adoptive families. Uh, we have a, an adoption fund. So if you're a, a member of Northridge Church, there's an adoption fund available to you. We've made some significant gifts over the years to the expensive costs of both domestic and international adoption. Yeah. We also support uh, the Care Portal, which is kind of a, an initiative where local caseworkers can support needs yeah. um, from you know families that are in need in our community, families that are connected to the foster care system. So that might be foster families, it might be biological families that are trying to stay together and not have a child removed and placed into foster care. And so we get a chance to come alongside those families and provide um, a bunk bed, a car seat, wh whatever it might be um, to support a family in a trying time. Mm. So those are some of the things we're doing. We're also working with the Hub 585, an incredible organization that has created the Hope Center. So mm. they have a, the, like the third floor of a building downtown where they're developing a place where um, they're doing training for foster families, training for biological families. They're also doing what's called a, a voice of Hope program where teenagers are able to learn entrepreneurship skills mm. and uh, be able to um, start writing, to write yeah. their stories and hopefully become published authors. And so this gives wow. kids that are teenagers in the foster care system who are going to age out of the system and maybe not have a permanent family wow. yeah. um, resources and a community to engage them and to serve them. So all of that's kind of yeah. building up families to be stronger. And I yeah. want to sum that up too, because like to me, like you know, you talk about passions, you're, mm. you're speaking oh. my alley right here. Yeah. Okay. And you know, I, I think one of the big things in our culture today that is missing is strong families, mm. right? When the family unit is strong, 
people usually thrive. Mm-hmm. And yeah. what you hear under here is we are keeping families together, mm-hmm. right? Can you imagine, you know, moms and dads where maybe just a fix on your home is the very thing that you can't afford that would keep your family together, Absolutely. right? Mm. That's huge, right? That's huge. We're also kids in foster care. Mm. We are giving them hope. We're giving them a loving family. Maybe that's a family in our church or we're supporting a family outside of our church. We're giving families who are in the foster care system, which we have a lot. Guess what? It's exhausting, mm-hmm. right? You, is it yes. exhausting, Josh? Oh my gosh, <laughs> every ounce of my energy, yes. <laughs> and we're coming alongside them and supporting them, saying, hey, we'll take the kids, you mm-hmm. take a date night because you need a break, mm-hmm. right? And so we are giving kids a loving home And guess what? Sometimes that home is the place where they are introduced to the gospel, right? right? You know, and so like that, this, you know, I might not do this for every segment, but this is like a huge piece of how our church can come along, get outside your walls of your home and love somebody else's home. Mm, Absolutely. And the reality is the the strongest and most capable family we have is the family of God. The church is a family. And so when we engage with these families, especially families that are not you know, connected to Northridge in any way, our people show up, uh, we coach them and challenge them to, to love deeply, love intentionally, mm-hmm. and then make an invite. And for many of them, the invite is, hey, do you want to come check out our church? And they might, the goal and the hope is, and we've seen it a few times, families saying, yeah, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll watch the service online or I'll come. Mm-hmm. And they start to see a deeper, richer family than the one that, you know, they're struggling to keep together. Mm-hmm. But here are people, a community group mm-hmm. that wraps around you, a yeah. community that loves me and cares for me. And suddenly they see the beauty of God lived mm-hmm. out through his family. And we're also ministering to the people, the social workers in 100%. the, fo- you know, they have no support. And guess what? Who Guess who should be their support? Mm-hmm. The church, mm-hmm. not some government institution. It should be us. It should be the body mm-hmm. of Christ. And so we're getting a chance to pray with social workers saying, hey, you got a need, we'll, we'll stand in the gap. And, yeah. you know, if you're listening, Northridge Care Portal team, like, come on, let's go, jump in. You want to be a foster family? We'll help get you ready and guide you. Like, let's go, let's get in the game. You know, beyond is just not beyond the walls of our church. It's beyond the walls of my house mm-hmm. and your house because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. we are the church. Absolutely. Sorry, you I'm preaching. Yeah, no, I'm I love preaching. it. Dude. <laughs> this, this will be two and a half hours by the time we're done. But, um, you cannot understate how incredible it's been to see the caseworkers respond to yeah, this. They yeah. know they can depend on Northridge. Um, I get the privilege of being kind of the point person to the caseworkers from our care portal team. And every single time um, Northridge raises their hand and says, we can meet a need, a caseworker goes, yes, 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 because they mm. know they can trust the Northridge team. We've got mm. 150 people on that team that are just rocking and rolling. We've got community groups that meet huge needs, um, providing like bunk bed sets, uh, car seats, um, all sorts of stuff. We had um, a family, uh, a foster family that was struggling because uh, the foster daughter, um, teenager with some significant kind of mental health uh, struggles, she was having a hard time connecting with her foster mom. And one of our groups provided an incredible like baking set and games, all these things that the mom and foster daughter could do together wow. to build relationship. That's and incredible. all the caseworkers are just, man, every time Northridge signs up, they go above mm-hmm. and beyond. That's awesome. Love yeah. It. And we're going to talk more specifically in two weeks about like local things. Things that how people can get involved, but just as simple, if somebody's like, I don't want to wait two weeks. How yeah, sure. how could I find out more information about some of these partners? Is there yeah something they uh, can do? If you just go to NorthridgeBeyond.com, NorthridgeBeyond.com. Okay. Um, we also have a button right now on I Want Info that says I Want Info on Northridge Beyond. If you click that, it'll take you there. Cool. We have all of our partners listed there under the Care Portal section. You can also click and sign up. We have a fully online orientation. So to join the team, Incredible. you watch mm. about an hour video and you fill out a little form about the role you want to play and what you've got you know cool. what you can bring to the table and then yeah and get that's involved. awesome let's go that's awesome all right well let's keep moving because i mean drew will continue to talk i know do i, I feel I a ser- series of like strong families uh, in in the i mean uh, yeah hey you know you never know I feel, I feel it i feel it coming so all right well cool the next one in poverty yeah, that so seems audacious. It is huge. That's the one that gets me in the most. Well, now seek justice. Yeah, we get in trouble for all of them. Um, but end poverty. <laughs> end poverty is a massive goal. What do we yeah. do? We can't end all the poverty out there. Um, but one of the things that we recognize is that God's kingdom has no poverty. So the coming, you know, mm. heaven, there is no poverty. So we want to chase eliminating poverty. When I say poverty, I don't just mean physical poverty. Like I don't mm. have enough Come stuff. On. Come on. I also recognize, you know, we've got relational poverty. Our relationships with others, conflict. Yeah. You know, sin breeds conflict. 
conflict in marriages and in friendships. There's also um, poverty of self, how I see myself. So many yeah. people either think too highly of themselves, pride, or they think too lowly of themselves, yeah. right? And that's yeah. not giving credit to being image bearers. God has created us, you know, mm. and, and we bear his image, which gives us a, a worth and a value. So yeah. we have poverty of self, poverty of relationship, poverty of creation, how we relate to the world around us. That's not being able to earn enough money. That's not having a stable job. That's not having mm. consistent housing. That's what we typically think of when we think mm. of poverty. So you got all those, and then you have the ultimate poverty, a poverty of my vertical relationship yeah. with God, right? Yep. And that's what Jesus overcame. I was disconnected from my heavenly father. There was this gap created by my yeah. sin that Jesus filled. So mm. can we pause we, there for a second? Because I want people to hear that, right? I, so many people jump to conclusions with words and yeah. poverty. Ultimately, our goal as Christians is to end poverty. It's the poverty of the void of God, yeah, right? Absolutely. Right. People absolutely. are void of God and that puts them into poverty. And if you study Jesus, you look at his life, what did he do to end that poverty? He met people's needs. He mm. healed them mm-hmm. to he acted out the gospel so he could share the gospel, yeah, right? Absolutely. You know, and like that is the ultimate poverty that we want to end, mm-hmm. but you end that poverty through other forms of physical poverty, you know, emotional poverty. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Tangent. Yeah, no, yeah. you're 100% yeah. right. That's the goal. That is that is the gospel. It's an yeah. ending of our spiritual poverty, the depravity, the separation from God. And so those other kinds of poverty, they both come before and after. I say before because we address those poverties sometimes as a means of pointing to the spiritual poverty, mm, right? Yeah. Meet a need and and see a person as a whole person, not just as a soul to save, but a body that will starve here, right? We want to engage yeah. the whole person. And then it's also, we address all these poverties after. When someone has a right relationship with God and has community around them, we can start to address the yeah. other kinds of poverty. We yep. can dive deep and say, how does the gospel transform Form how I relate to my spouse. How do mm. I, you know, community groups are all about addressing relational poverty. How yeah. do I address that within the church through community groups? My personal understanding of myself. Like we don't, we don't want to ever get into, you know, self-help or self-esteem for the sake of it or, yeah. or yeah. think too lowly of ourselves. That's the kind of stuff that when you did the mind game series, when we're thinking about our, you know, mental health and who we are, that's all different kinds of poverty. And we address them after we receive Christ because mm-hmm. the gospel speaks to all of these realms. Yeah. So, you know, we address yeah. all these poverties both before and after a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love this. What I, what I love about these three legs of beyond, if you want to say that, like a, a bar stool, three, three, whatever, however you want to try. The, tri- the Trinity The Trinity, of the Trinity of beyond, <laughs> yeah, whatever you want to say. Is that blasphemy? Uh, I think it is. Probably, just slightly. Heresy, um, whatever. <laughs> Please forgive Drew. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but is when we hear these, we have so many things that we just jump to conclusions of like, oh, well, this is what this means. But that's really, we if, when we don't flesh these out or really think deeply about these things, we make these assumptions. Because an easy assumption is, is like, well, you didn't see, say the word like salvation or, or mm-hmm. the gospel mm-hmm. in strengthen families in poverty, seek justice. You didn't say explicitly like, how are you sharing the good news, but you're really hitting a whole gospel thing because what I don't want people to miss is the thread in all of these legs is meeting both physical and spiritual needs of these different, in these different avenues. Mm -hmm. It's not one or the other um, because we, we do a weak gospel presentation when all we do is tell somebody like, Hey, you're a sinner. You need Jesus. Well, Um, I think that's a huge distinction that the church needs to make you don't just share the gospel with your words. You can share the gospel with your actions. You can share the gospel with your words, right? Those two need to go in hand in hand. We need to to declare that, hey, man, we are fallen and we need a savior, right? We need to declare that with our lips, but also with how we live, how we act, how we love our neighbor, how we step in and love the widow, the poor, Mm -hmm. the orphan, right? Yeah, you know, I think there was a there was like a there's a statement that was said by some ancient church father. It's like um, uh, preach the gospel at all times, and if necessary, use words. Like I think that's a weak statement, you know, because it's like no, we, we you still have to y- say you gotta something, say something. it, yeah. <laughs> you, and but you, we've almost the pendulum has swung to the other side where missions, if you look at it historically, has just said, okay, let's go to all these countries that never heard about Jesus and just let's say it, let's just say a bunch of stuff. Um, which is good, but then that leads down to other unhelpful 
trails. We, it has to be a whole gospel. Yeah. Um, you know, if you if you read like some of my favorite writings in scripture that are the prophets mm-hmm. of how they sought justice mm-hmm. and how they shared the gospel and how where they were coming against the people of God, saying like you're missing it because you're just giving a bunch of lip service. Yeah. Like you, you're not actually meeting the widow and the orphan's needs. You, you got to do both of these with a pure heart that's yeah. an attitude towards God. And so that's what I don't want people to miss is that thread Absolutely. of just the gospel in word of the good news is present in all these things and how we're engaging them mm. beyond the walls of our church. But also we're saying you have to, we must uh, meet physical needs, because if we're not meeting people's physical needs, if we're just saying, sorry about your situation, but let me tell you about Jesus, that that is a short sell of the life of Christ mm-hmm. and how God in, calls us to engage in the world as well. Yeah, mm. that's perfect. Yep. Yeah. All right, well, la- the last leg is seek justice. I'll let you take this one. If you <laughs> <laughs> so um, I, I mentioned earlier, uh, the ultimate act of justice was Christ dying for us, yeah. right? Like God's God's wrath, um, you know, all of our sin, the penalty for our sin was death. All of that uh, created the world we have today. Sin creates injustice. It creates inequality. We have a world where tension and conflict is just rampant. And mm-hmm. so when Jesus died on the cross, that was the ultimate expression of both love and justice all in the same, you know, act And so what we want to do is we want to recognize that not everything that happens in our world is just individual people doing Mm. individual sinful acts. Now, the reality is the goal is to transform the human heart. We want God to change hearts and to change people. But when we're addressing things like ending poverty, if we spend all day providing you know, goods, just meeting physical needs directly, we're going to be in an endless cycle. So we have to ask yeah. the question, what, what can we do upstream? Um, and I know this is, this is messy. It's hard to figure out how to do this really well mm-hmm. because there's political implications and, and people get real hung up on how to do this well. And so we're still figuring it out. But we want to ask the question, how do we get upstream? What, mm-hmm. what inequalities, what struggles are out there that we can kind of build systems or networks that would encourage and equip people to be able to, to live lives that, where they can flourish. How do we overcome the injustices in our society? Um, Simple examples of of that are things like the refugees that are coming from Afghanistan to the United States. How do we, how do we advocate for them? How do we create, you know, many of them served as translators in Afghanistan for us uh, in the war that, that we've been in for decades that just recently wrapped up. They served as translators and now we're bringing them to the United States. How do we support them? How do we love them? How do we care well for them and their families. That's a justice issue. It doesn't sound mm-hmm. like it. It's a, it's a poverty yeah. issue, but it's also, it's a justice mm-hmm. issue. Yeah. How do we create um, a situation where they can live out their God-given mm-hmm. talents, what God has made them to be and do uh, in really a, a full way? I like that word that you said, advocate. I think mm-hmm. when it comes to seeking justice, it's us advocating for people who can't advocate for themselves, right? And so there's many things in our culture today that I think as Christians, we should advocate for people, right? I think we should advocate for people who are treated unjustly based off the color of their skin, right? Mm -hmm. We should stand up as Christians and say, that's wrong. And we don't agree with it. And we're going to do something about it. I think we should advocate for babies who are being aborted, who can't speak for themselves. We as Christians should stand up and say, we're going to advocate and we, that's not right. And we're going to do something about it, right? The refugees, hey, they can't speak for themselves. They might not even know the language to speak mm, for yeah, themselves. Right, right. We're going to stand up and we're going to advocate for them because we're going to seek justice. And this is biblical, right? The, Micah says to act justly, right? Mm-hmm. And what that means, in my opinion, is live a certain way, mm-hmm. right? You live, a ju- like, live justice out, but also advocate for people who cannot advocate for themselves. And again, our culture is so divisive right now. And it's so easy to hear these words, you know, seek justice and think we're going down this agenda, right? Mm -hmm. Guys, let's just stop and read the Bible and understand how God wants us to live. Mm -hmm. And that means we should stand up when our brothers and sisters who carry the image of God are being hurt and are Mm -hmm. crying out for help and be like, you know what? This isn't a political thing. This is a God thing, right? When babies are being aborted at a 
you know, crazy rate, we should stand up and say, no, this isn't a political thing. This is a God thing, Mm -hmm. right? And that's what it means to seek justice. And let's get past the polarizing, divisive talk. Let's come together and stand up for the things that God would stand up for. What I love about that isn't just that we're trying to address these issues at the front. I I mentioned a moment ago, it's about getting upstream. So even like the abortion issue, um, we want to save the lives of these children, but we also want to work towards a system where that is a less enticing outcome yeah. for a mom, yeah. right? A mom mm-hmm. has a, a pregnancy, an unintended pregnancy. And so um, how do we help her imagine a future for her child? Yeah. How do we empower and equip her so that, you know, the the poverty circumstances or a lack of money or a lack of her future, she might imagine a future where if this child is here, everything I dreamed of is gone. How do we create mm-hmm. a world, a community, a church where those um, people feel cared for and loved and wrapped around? It's, yeah. it's getting upstream of these issues. So what we would call the unjust moments, like the abortion of a child, um, those unjust moments become unnecessary yeah. because we've yeah. created yeah. a space, a world where people can flourish and live out the way God intends. Right. And think about this, how each leg, right, Mm -hmm. actually plays hand in hand, right? If we are strengthening families, hopefully we are helping a mom who feels helpless feel hopeful, right? Mm -hmm. Who has another pregnancy say, this is not my only option. I've got a church in locally that Mm -hmm. will support me, will help Mm -hmm. me, will keep my family together. And yeah, when we come together and we do these three things, we will bring the gospel, mm-hmm. right? The gospel will be a, the people in our community and in the world will see a full picture of who Jesus is, what he did, and what he can bring into their lives. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. There, I was sitting there thinking as you guys were talking, is they're not separated things, but they're like overlapping circles. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're they are. If there's elements of them that of strength in families that oh, it's just in this category or you know some of the other two, but there's parts of it, it's like. Oh, when we're doing this, we're also simultaneously aiding in these other yeah. things, uh, which is super helpful. The the last question that I want to end on is, man, this sounds amazing. Uh, like it's it almost sounds in, in the av- avenue of like we have the answers, like we're we're the experts. But I know that's not any of our hearts in that direction. So, um, yeah, w- what do you do when you, when you're tackling issues that literally almost so many people are talking about politically or talking about? Um, and we're wrestling. Yeah. So, so how do we navigate that? Are we the experts or what, what do we do with this? No, I can say <laughs> confidently. No. So I've never been called an expert. <laughs> <by the way. laughs> one, one of the things that I love about our approach to beyond is instead of recreating the wheel, instead of saying, Hey, Northridge needs to have a clothing closet, a homeless ministry, our own crisis pregnancy ministry. Instead of doing all of that, we instead say, Hey, we know there are experts out there in these areas. Mm. And so we try to find the partners in our community that we think are killing it. They're not just meaning well, they're actually doing well. Mm, the, yeah. That dollars translate to impact Mm. that volunteers are having, you know, real kingdom impact in the spaces in which they serve. So my challenge to everyone would be to, it doesn't have to be our partners, but we've done the work of curating some partners that we think are great. Um, Maybe there's other partners out there that that you love and are passionate about, but um, find the space where you can be around the real experts and not just the experts in the area that you're addressing, but also the people being served. To hear from people in, if you're passionate about foster care, hear from biological families, hear from caseworkers, and then partner with those leaders in our partner ministries who are on the ground doing the work. Learn from them, dig deep, engage. Um, I know for many of our community groups and many people, we're often looking for a one-time serve, and especially Christmas. I want to get out there. I want to serve. I want to, you know, scoop soup into a bowl or whatever. And that's all, all great stuff. But my challenge would be to learn from the experts, hear more than our limited worldview. Mm. I've been like in my time connecting with refugee ministry and with foster care ministry, my mind has just exploded yeah. with so the, the issues are so much more nuanced, yeah. so much more complicated yeah. than my little corner of the world ever I yeah. could have ever imagined. So I would challenge get around the experts and listen from the people who are really impacted by these issues. Yeah. yeah. And I think, you know, we're not the experts, but we are the church. Yeah, and absolutely. I believe the church is the hope of the world mm-hmm. because Jesus died for it. And I think the church should rise up. Like, yeah. this is our responsibility. It follows on our shoulders. We are God's witnesses. And we should be leading 
the forefront mm-hmm. of these things, right? Yeah. It We shouldn't be waiting on someone else. We should be stepping up. And I think the word that I would love for our church to just kind of rally around is investment, mm-hmm. right? It's easy to do a one-off. Like, hey, I'm going to feel yeah. good this Christmas season because I do serve once a year and yeah, I yeah, yeah. scoop, you know, but like find an area, find your passion, whether it's like under justice, like, man, I'm passionate about ending abortion. Mm. Okay, awesome. Find that, go to Compass Care and be like, hey, how can I invest there? Or yeah. maybe you're passionate about the foster care system and say, how can I be mm-hmm. uh, a respite family or how can I be a foster care family and invest mm-hmm. there? We need people who are willing to invest, not check a box. Mm. And I think when we invest as a church in beyond, we, that's when things really start to move. Yeah, because yeah, I think the the two things I would say, one is like begin to pray for that. You know, that was a challenge a couple of weeks ago yeah. um, in a message I gave, but that, that's not just me saying, like, oh yeah, remember when I did that? No, just saying like, just pray for that of like, okay, where is God stirring you to, yeah. to have that investment? But then also, because what you're saying there, Drew and, and Josh, you've even said is, is that investment will not will not lead you to check a box, but it'll it'll lead you to get relational equity. Yeah. Because when it's not just a theoretical idea on a whiteboard, but when you have faces mm-hmm. and names of these people that these issues are really impacting and hurting them, then it it spurs us on not to be necessarily the experts, but to say, I'm jumping in. And and the reason that we, we would say like as church staff that no, we're not the experts on how to end this thing, but the hope and the answer is yeah. uh, found in Christ and, yeah. and God, you know, redeeming and renewing and restoring all things. And we need to get in the game. Mm-hmm. It's not like let's hide away in our holy huddles until he comes back. But it's saying like, how can we advance the mission, advance the kingdom m- and meeting while doing that both physical and spiritual needs. And yeah. so this has been a great conversation, Love guys. Uh, thanks so much for listening, liking, commenting, subscribing. Uh, and we can't wait to be back next week for Beyond Part 2. We'll see you then. Bye.